EU leaders meet in Brussels as they try to thrash out a deal with Hungary over its lack of support for Ukraine. Dozens of Russian citizens have joined the Ukrainian army to fight against Vladimir Putin's invasion. Israel says it will not stop its war in Gaza as the death toll rises and international pressure grows for a ceasefire. The number of journalists killed is at its lowest rate since 2002, according to the RSF, despite the growing death toll from the war in Gaza. A difficult and long summit in sight. EU leaders meet in Brussels aiming to give Ukraine a much-needed boost and with two goals in mind, opening membership talks and guaranteeing long-term financial support. The one country, Hungary, is threatening to derail it all. Enlargement is not a theoretical issue. Enlargement is a merit-based, legally detailed process, uh, which has preconditions. We have set up seven preconditions. And even by the evaluation of the Commission, three out of the seven is not fulfilled. So there is no reason to negotiate membership of Ukraine now, even not to negotiate. The 27 heads of state and government will try to convince Hungary otherwise, but if Prime Minister Viktor Orban remains unbending, other options are on the table to avoid sending a dangerous signal to Ukraine. When it comes to money, though, leaders are set to approve a 50 billion euros finance package for Kiev, but they could decide to do it with 26 member states, leaving Hungary in the cold. Right now, um, let's focus on the plan A, uh, because uh, we are still, I mean, before the negotiations right now, uh, if we don't reach an agreement, then we can think about uh, what other options are there. The moment is especially crucial for Ukraine, as across the pond, the US Congress continues to block funds for the embattled country. I think it's crucial that we decide on this uh, 50 billion package, particularly now that in the US, I think more internal politics than, than that it is about Ukraine, uh, that the decision has been postponed. So it's the more crucial that we get to a positive decision on both. But it isn't the only big issue at this European summit. The EU needs to review its multi-annual budget due to unforeseen expenses, including inflation and higher interest rates. The Commission is asking for more funds, but there's disagreements over where to find the extra money and how to spend it. While Germany and the Netherlands only want to chip in for Ukraine, others like Italy and Greece want to see more money for other areas like migration. President Vladimir Putin said on Thursday that 617,000 Russian troops are currently fighting in Ukraine. He obviously wasn't counting members of the so-called Siberian Battalion. These are a few dozen Russian citizens who have joined the Ukrainian armed forces to resist what they consider unlawful aggression towards a peaceful neighbor. Тому що я розчарувався у власному народі. Тому я захотів ще на початку війни приїхати сюди і воювати за вільну Україну. В першу чергу, нинішнє російське правительство, воно украло велике кількість можливостей і майбутнє у свого населення. Ukrainian army officials said the battalion has already been involved in fighting near Avdiivka in eastern Ukraine. They expect the group to grow by several hundred fighters in the coming months, with many other Russians saying they want to join. Odessa and other parts of southern Ukraine have been hit in a wave of overnight drone attacks by Russia. The port city bore the brunt of the airstrikes, with air defenses destroying 32 of 39 drones. But those that weren't intercepted hit a number of residential and industrial buildings, injuring 11 people, including three children. Parts of Kherson and Mykolaiv oblasts were also targeted. It was the second night in a row of attacks against Odessa. An auto workshop was destroyed and two people injured on Wednesday. In the same wave of overnight strikes, 53 people were injured in a barrage of drones and missile strikes on Kyiv. 
As it did last winter, Russia is intensifying its air attacks on Ukrainian infrastructure. Ukraine has bolstered its air defenses since then, but cannot fend off all the assaults. Israel is determined to continue its war in Gaza despite increasing international pressure for a ceasefire, including from the UN. The mounting civilian casualties and deteriorating humanitarian situation is causing international support for Israel to waver. Its Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, after a visit to IDF commanders, says nothing will stop them. <laughs> Hamas has released images of its operation in Gaza. The enclave's health ministry says the offensive has resulted in the death of more than 18,400 Palestinians. There are reports in U.S. media that Israel has recently begun pumping seawater into Hamas' vast labyrinth of tunnels underneath Gaza in a process that is likely to take weeks. There's also concerns some of the hostages may be held underground. Meanwhile, heavy rainfall flooded Gaza's streets and camps sheltering thousands of displaced people, adding to what has been described as hell-on-earth conditions. Now, in its third month, the bloodiest ever war in Gaza is grinding on, forcing survivors to face bombardment, deprivation and disease. Despite the eruption of the Israel-Hamas war, the number of journalists killed in the course of their work has fallen to its lowest level since 2002. The annual report of Reporters Sans Frontier or Reporters Without Borders says 45 media professionals have lost their lives in 2023, 17 of them covering Israel's war against Hamas. The figure includes those caught in the shelling of a group of journalists in southern Lebanon, in which one person died. The RSF report shows the casualty rate has stabilized in recent years in the 50s and 60s. The decline is largely explained by the increased safety of journalists working in Syria and Iraq since 2013. There's also been a large drop in deaths in Latin America, falling from 26 last year to 6 in 2023. But the region remains dangerous, with armed attacks and kidnappings a constant threat for media members in some countries particularly Mexico. Hungary's right-wing populist government has passed a law, quote, protecting national sovereignty to defend against what the ruling party has called undue political interference by foreign persons or groups. A move slammed by experts. <laughs> hogy olyan szervezetként, amely, amely véleményt alkot a politikáról nyilvánosan és van nemzetközi kapcsolatrendszere, és azért ezek nem ördögtől való dolgok, ott, ott azért felmerülhet annak a gyanúja, hogy beleesik el ennek a törvénynek a, a, azon passzusaiba, amelyek a, a nem kívánatos szuverenitás fenyegető veszélyekről szólnak, vagy pedig nem. The law calls for the creation of a new government authority that will have the power to gather information on any groups or individuals that benefit from foreign funding for election campaigns or groups that might influence public debate. A szuverenitás védelmi törvényt elfogadták. Azt azonban továbbra sem lehet tudni, hogy a kormány pontosan kiktől szeretné megóvni Magyarországot. Elvégre a törvény szövege alapján akár az Euronews újságíróit is könnyedén külföldi ügynököknek bélyegezhetnék. Sipos Egyi Zoltán, Euronews Budapest. The Republican-controlled House of Representatives in the United States has voted to formally authorize its ongoing impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. He is accused of bribery and corruption at the time he was vice president. It's alleged he benefited from the business dealings of his son Hunter. But after almost a year of investigation, no evidence has emerged that Joe Biden has acted corruptly or accepted bribes. Last week, Hunter was criminally charged for tax-related offenses in California.
Good news for e-commerce giant Amazon on Thursday when Europe's top court ruled that it does not have to pay 250 million euros in back taxes to Luxembourg. It dismissed the European Commission's argument that the American company's tax arrangements amounted to illegal state aid. But the ruling is seen as a blow to the bloc's efforts to crack down on sweetheart tax deals for multinationals. NGO Oxfam denounced the decision, describing it as an early Christmas gift to Amazon and urged the EU to come forward with real tax reforms. Japan, Italy and the UK are set to jointly develop a next-generation fighter jet. Companies from the three countries reportedly plan to finalise the design for the jet by 2027. The deal comes a year after the project was first announced. The new jets will replace the Eurofighter Typhoon. Production will begin around 2030, and the first jets are set to be deployed five years later. The project marks Japan's first joint defense development deal with a nation other than its closest security ally, the United States. Storm Fergus has caused severe flooding in France's southwest after it brought heavy rains and strong winds. Roads and fields were inundated as authorities issued weather warnings. Residents are just emerging from a previous episode in mid-November. Many communes are still flooded from the last time, with saturated water tables preventing water from receding. The wet weather is set to spread across the country. 